Uh, my name is Peggy McGlone, and I cover the arts and culture for The Washington Post. It is my pleasure to introduce Ronald L. Smith this afternoon. Before he became a novelist, Mr. Smith worked in advertising, a job that took him around the world to write commercials, promoting cars, cheeseburgers, and airlines. His childhood love of fantasy and science fiction pushed him to ditch that career and the fancy meals and hotels that went with it and try his hand at writing fiction. His first book, Hoodoo, a spooky thriller set in 1930s Alabama, was published, published in 2015. Critics praised Smith for his believable characters, his creepy setting, swift pace, and for creating, quote, chilling moments that keep readers on edge. Hoodoo won the American Library Association's Coretta Scott King John Steptoe Award for new talent. He switched gears in The Mesmerist, choosing 19th century London for the setting of a supernatural adventure of 13-year-old Jasmine. And his third, Black Panther, The Young Prince, featured Marvel Comics superhero and was named a fantasy must read. His most recent book, The Owls Have Come to Take Us Away, is the story of an alien obsessed 12 year old, a budding author who believes he may have been abducted while on a camping trip. Mr. Smith will sign books at 5.30. And now I give you Ronald L. Smith. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. All right, can you guys see that screen there? That's me. And uh, with a scary clown. Who knows who that clown is? Stephen King. Who likes scary stories? Where are the kids? Where are the kids in the house? All right, who likes scary stories? Good, I, I write scary, strange stories, and I like being afraid, but I get to make all the decisions, so it's not that scary. But uh, thanks for hanging out and being here. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my books and why I write children's books. Do we have some big readers out there? Who likes to read? All right, yeah. Reading makes you a more interesting person, kids and adults. Nobody wants to be boring, right? Everybody wants to know a lot of stuff. So anyway, this is my first book, Hoodoo, which you just heard about. It was my first book. It's about a 12-year-old kid in Alabama who has to defeat this magic big bad guy that comes to his town, but he doesn't know any magic himself. I'll go through these quickly. And The Mesmerist, as you heard, it's about 12-year-old Jessamine, and she's in London. She has superpowers, special powers. She can read minds. She finds other kids like her and there's a big threat that's coming to London that they have to save. And then this book, which you may have heard of. Who knows who that is? Yeah, Wakanda what? Yeah. So this was a lot of fun, and I still can't believe that I got a chance to write it, but somehow it got done. It was all like a it was like a dream, you know? Like when you're doing something in school or you're reading a book and somehow I got this opportunity and it just kind of all came together. I was very nervous writing this, right? Because Black Panther's a really big superhero, right? So I had to write about him as a kid. So it was a lot of fun to write and it's not a spoiler, but the book is about the young Black Panther, right? So before he becomes the Black Panther, he's what, a prince, right? Before you're a king, you're a prince, right? So what's it like for him to not have all that power? So he's in Wakanda, he's the prince, everybody's like saying yes, 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 you know, everything, he's, he's probably pretty spoiled. So in the book, his father, the ruling Black Panther, sends him away to Chicago with M'Baku because there's a threat in Wakanda, so T'Challa is in Southside Middle School in Chicago. So what is he like when he doesn't have everybody falling over them to talk to him? What's he like as a regular kid? So that's what I wanted to explore. And then my latest book is The Owls Have Come to Take Us Away. Who knows about aliens? Anybody? Can you guys see the alien face in there? Look closely. See the eyes? See it? 
So this is about a 12-year-old kid who grows up on military or Air Force bases. And he's a creative kid. He's kind of shy. He's kind of weird. Basically, it's me when I was a kid. Because uh, I grew up in an Air Force family, and we moved around a lot. But basically, he's, uh, he's a nerd. He's a nerd kid, and nerds are cool. I like nerds. But he thinks he's been kidnapped by an alien at some point, and nobody believes him, right? But he's telling his friends, he told his parents, nobody believes him. So the thing is, is he telling the truth? Or, you know, or is something else going on with him? So you have to read the book to find out what happens. We're going to save some time at the end for questions, OK? Oh, and very quickly, this is something I'm be very proud to be a part of. It's from Random House and We Need Diverse Books Movement. It's called The Hero Next Door. It's short stories about everyday heroes. Not the heroes who wear capes, but you know the everyday heroes you might see, like neighbors or anybody. So it's a really cool book, and I'm really be proud to be a part of it. All right, so why does a grown-up write children's books? Who wants to answer the question? Why does a grown-up write children's books? Anybody? Uh -huh. Right, so we can write things that other people will enjoy. So I wrote children's books because, well, I'll just show you. This was one of the first books I read when I was a kid. It's really weird. It's called The Wonderful Flight to the Mushroom Planet. I'm sure nobody's ever heard of it, unless you're very, very old, like me. This book is so old, it only costs 50 cents. You can see the price point. <laughs> but it's about these kids who build a rocket ship to Mars in their basement. And this book like, really like, took off for me. It made me really imagine like, other worlds, right? And then, have you guys heard of these books? These are really old covers. You know The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings? These are the really old covers for those books. And I was really into these books a lot. I read them all the time. And then there's A Wizard of Earthsea. It's about a wizard who lives in a world that's made up of archipelagos, these islands, and he goes on a journey to become a wizard. And have you guys heard of this? You know this, right? The Chronicles of Narnia? The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Yep. So these books, they kind of ignited an itch in my brain, and I had to scratch it. So you know what I did? I started writing. That's my cat. So I had my journal. Who keeps a journal? Does anybody like to draw, uh, like keep a notebook or journal and write stories and stuff in it? Yeah, you should do that. It's it's cool. You can when you when you get older, you can go back and see what you were thinking when you were like in middle school or sixth grade or fifth grade. So I was writing stories, and these are some of my notebooks, and I was drawing little maps and stuff, and coming up with crazy ideas. And these are all the manuscripts I was writing before I even sold a book. So if there are any writers out there, Hoodoo was my first published book, but I wrote a bunch of books before that, but they weren't quite good enough to make the cut. But you know what? This is what happened. You guys read that? I grew up, got a job, and forgot about those books, because you grow up and you're supposed to get serious, right? Like, what are you doing reading those kids' books? You need to be serious, right? So I was too busy being an adult, so I kind of forgot about that stuff. Oh. I started writing serious books, the ones that make you fall asleep. And then one day, Doesn't that sound just make you like, yes? 
So my brother worked at a Barnes and Noble, and he told me that there were some cool books out. Uh, Harry Potter, right? So I went in and I read Harry Potter, and I was like, wow, these are like the books I really enjoyed as a kid. And then he turned me on to these too, right? Do you know these? Lemony Snicket, a series of unfortunate events? Yeah, right. What about Sabriel? Has anybody heard of that? That's a great story with a girl hero. And you know, you guys know there are no boy books and girl books, right? They're only good books. So you can read whatever you want to read. Don't let anybody tell you what you can or can't read. And then there's His Dark Materials, which is awesome. So I started writing again. So I wrote some books, and they weren't very good. But I kept working at it, and on my third novel, I got a book deal, yay. And this is how I felt. Step into the spotlight. That's how I felt. Everybody dances in school, right? All right, so I'm going to show you a little film. Oh, I'd like to know how much time I have. Where's my time person? I don't want to go over. OK, so how do you write a novel, right? I'm going to show you guys how to do it, OK? Pay close attention. Not everybody learns this, OK? Here we go. That's how you write a novel. You just have to keep going. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. It doesn't matter how old you are for the adults out there. I wasn't a 20-something or a 30-something or a 40-something. But somehow, I still did it because it's something I really wanted to do. So when I visit schools, I always show this picture. And I get sad now because I always showed this picture, and I ask the kids who it is, and sometimes they know and sometimes they don't. But she was a great writer, and I have this on my wall in my office. Her name's Toni Morrison, and we lost her recently. But this is what she said. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because everybody has a different story. No, everybody's story is different. So. Only one of one, everybody's got a different story. So I really love this quote. And then I also ask the kids if they know who this is. Does anybody know who this is? All right. Pablo Picasso. That's right. And you know what he said? Right? Doesn't that make a sense? Remember when I said I grew up and I had to like put away the books and the fantasy books and the sci fi? Well, Pablo Picasso said, 
the problem is staying an artist. You know, every child is an artist, right? So even if you're not into writing or reading, whether you're into ballet or, or football or basketball or knitting or whatever you want to do, just go for it. Just do it. Do it until you get really, really good at it. And then maybe one day that can be your job when you grow up. So always do what you want to do and don't let anybody tell you you can't. Thank you. Step into the spotlight. All right. Do we have time for questions? About 10 minutes if we have any questions. I think the question was, does my book have anything to do with Area 51? Never heard of it. I can't tell you. <laughs> well, there's a lot of UO stuff in there. But yeah, there's a mention of it. Yeah. It's crazy stuff. All right, who else has a question? Really speak up loud. What's my next book? It's called Gloom Town. And... I think I might even be able to show you the cover, but, or maybe not. Oh, wait a minute. Well, no, I can't show you the cover. But it's about two kids in a seaside town, and there's something really creepy going on at a place called Foxglove Manor, and these bad guys are stealing people's shadows. Ooh. It's called Gloom Town. As a kid, what really sparked my desire for science fiction? Well, you know something? We moved around a lot as, when I was a kid. I was in a military family in the Air Force, and we moved to new schools every two years. So you know how hard it is to make friends in school, right? So every time I got to have a friend or get to know somebody, we would end up moving. So I always felt like I just put myself in books all the time. That was my escape, because I was always sad because my friends would leave. So every time I would go to a new school, I'd go to the library. Any librarians in the house? Yeah. <laughs> so I would always go to the librarian, and uh, she, she would usually recommend books. And they were always sci-fi and fantasy. I wanted to escape the reality of moving every two years. So I think it's because I just wanted to escape. That's why. Have I read the whole Harry Potter series? Um, yeah. Two times, maybe three. I'm Gryffindor. Yeah. Oh my God. On a scale of one to 10, how would I rate the book? Well, it's J.K. Rowling, who is the greatest person who ever lived, so what can I ever say to, say to that? It's a fantastic book, I loved it. My favorite Harry Potter movie is Prisoner of Azkaban. That's my favorite. Who else? Anybody else? We got a few more minutes? Oh.
What's the scariest book that I've read? Um, I have a lot of smart, smart aleck answers to that, but I don't know. Um, there's a writer that you guys are too young to read, so I probably shouldn't tell you. It's kind of like Stephen King, you know? And there's some others, but they're way too creepy, so I don't, I don't want to tell you, because then you'll go look it up, <laughs> and then your parents will be mad at me. Uh, I like going to schools because kids will just ask you anything. How many houses do you have? What kind of car do you have? How much money do you make? How old are you? I'm really old. Yeah, I'm old. I'm old enough to know that it's never too late to chase your dreams. Oh. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody.